Welcome to the Lalula podcast, real life conversations about modern sexuality and how to live a happy, healthy, turned on life. I'm your host, Laura Allen, a holistic health coach and founder of Lalula, an online platform offering natural erotica toys, as well as the educational tools you need to expand your pleasure in and outside the bedroom. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to the Lalula podcast. Today I'm interviewing Caitlin Howitt and she's just a total angel and now like a sister. This conversation was amazing. We had so much fun. I felt like I was just curled up next to her with a beautiful cup of tea and they yeah, really, really flowed. And it's an interesting episode because the topic that I originally had planned to do as well as, you know, written out all of the questions and so on, I pretty much binned about two hours before jumping online <laughs> to have the interview. And it just wasn't feeling right. I wasn't feeling inspired by it. So I decided to go with something completely different and we just completely flowed. So this episode is really freestyle, but there's heaps of juicy, juicy wisdom in here. We're talking about intentional commitment, marriage, what marriage is these days. And we talk about love, self-love, how to show up as a full sovereign being in relationship and how to create the epic legendary love that we really deeply desire. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. And don't forget to leave us a review. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, leave us your feedback on Instagram, all of the things. All right, let's enjoy the show. <laughs> Welcome, Caitlin, to the, to the show. It's honestly, it's amazing to have you here. I just I adore you so, so much, and I'm hugely inspired by you and your work all the time. So it's just, yeah, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm I'm really excited. I really, really am. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is awesome. I'm also just like total fangirl and like excited to connect with you on a personal level. I like, in a way, I wish that I was like sitting next to you drinking tea and like just hanging oh, out. So well, this is the second best, yeah. isn't it? Like- the fact that we can basically have a cup of tea online with whoever we want is pretty awesome. So <laughs> true. So it, I know, like the internet, it's, it's, it is good. The internet is good. It enables us to do a lot of cool things. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, this episode is going to be really cool because what I had originally intended to do was something completely different to what we're actually going to be talking about. So it's going to be completely freestyle flow. And I think that's, yeah, I'm excited about it. But basically, one of the things that I'm mostly drawn to with you is the way that you really honor and create love in your relationship with Tully and how intentional your commitment is and how beautifully you both speak about relating. So, oh my goodness, before we go into that, I forgot the most important question of the entire <laughs> podcast. And and that is, what color are you today and why? Oh, like you wouldn't think that's a hard question, but it's a really hard question. <laughs> I want to be peach today. Because today is very cloudy outside and I feel like a bit of sunshine. So that's, Beautiful. that's my color. <laughs> Good. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. So now we're going to go into the relationship stuff. Yeah. So just love, 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 love how you portray yourself and your relationship. And I really want to dive into what intentional commitment is and really define what marriage means in, you know, the 21st century because it's changed so much over the last, you know, 40, 40 50 years alone. Mm. And um, 
Yeah. So I guess the best place to start and a really beautiful story you could share with us is your relationship with Tully. Like, tell us your falling in love story and maybe share with us a little bit about your wedding because from what I've seen, it was a really beautiful love story and inspiring tale. Oh, thank you. Like, yeah, I always love talking about love. Like, when I was younger, like, even I think at about 15 or 16, I just became obsessed with relationship and love and human nature and, you know, why do we do the things we do and why do we feel the things we feel and is it all set in stone or is it all fluid and, like, how does it all look? And I was just, like, absolutely fascinated by it. So um when I met Tully, I was actually in another relationship and so was he and we just met at, like, a, a personal development seminar and it was very brief and very platonic and we both went on to have some beautiful relationships and we circled back around to re-meeting each other when I was 19. Um, there's, I think, like a seven-year or eight-year age gap between us. So he'd done a lot more travel and living of his life. And, yeah, so we re-met at another personal development seminar, which was, I guess, where we always like came together over the years. We'd always like meet at those and say hi and that sort of thing. But this time it was a little bit different. I think like I had kind of finally declared to myself that I was ready for like something really deep and that was really going to like be quite pivotal in my life. And I wasn't exactly attached to it having to be the one necessarily, but I was definitely open to that. And, um, yeah, when I met Tully in the room again that day, it was just like my whole body just went and it was just this weird like chemistry that we had never had before. So it was kind of like took me by surprise a little bit and it just was like kind of, um, propelled by curiosity. And so that was just what we flowed with. It was like, okay, I'm curious about what this is and what this feels like. So let's just take it day by day and see. And so we just started dating quite casually, like week by week, kind of seeing each other once here and there. And then it slowly just kept evolving. And I think it was the first time in my life that I had been interested in a man without having attachment of having to be with him you know, like I just felt like, oh, this is fun and this is flowy and I'm really enjoying getting to know this guy, but I don't need him to like put a ring on my finger right now or I don't need him to commit to me this second or like I just had no attachment for the first time. And I think it was because I was really solid in myself for the first time as well that um, I didn't need him mm. to prove to me that we had to be anything more than just what was happening in that moment. So um, fast forward, I think three or four months of dating we went to a Tantra retreat together, which, you know, immediately kind of throws you in the deep end. Like in hindsight, I'm like, whoa, he did a lot of power moves, but at the time I had no idea. So uh, we went to a week-long Tantra retreat in North Bali. How was that? That was because phenomenal. taking, like, amazing, but I mean, like, I feel nervous, like, taking a partner to a Tantra anything because it's such a big like tantra can really turn you inside and out and i feel like it's almost a risk to take a lover there it's like i don't know if we're going to come out of this alive you know like it's so scary totally it was like and it was weird no it wasn't weird but it was like we weren't even like an official thing yet so i was like oh like people are okay to know about this now like what's what is this even like does it need to be something like, I don't know I was just a bit confused but also like my personality is I can well especially then like very free-spirited very like that real like innocence energy like I know I know some people would probably dub it as naive but I was just innocent so like I didn't even question it I was just like of course we're gonna go and it was mm. extremely transformational like I had I'd been dabbling in a couple of workshops leading up to that, my own. And like Tully had been in the Tantra world for, and when I say Tantra, it it isn't um, like, I know it can be interpreted as like sexual a lot, but it's really about emotional intelligence and about just the freedom of living 
uh, in your like human experience really. So like sexuality is a part of that, Mm. but it's not all of what Tantra is. And so, um, yeah, like we went and it blew my mind wide open. Like I had never had that level of just emotional awareness. Like I'd never seen people like screaming in their rage or pain or grief or like sobbing in just love and connectedness or like being completely elated and completely free with how they express themselves. Um, and for a 19 year old, like that blows your mind. Like, and I was brought up in like a, a family that was quite fine emotionally. Like we weren't like numb to it or anything, but like it was just the whole different spectrum. And it is so out the gate, that kind of work that like really cathartic Mm -hmm. work is just like, Oh my God. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm in a situation or I'm doing a workshop like that and somehow I like dissociate and come out of my body and I'm looking down in this room where we're all just going completely mental and I'm like, mm-hmm. what, the f- what am I right? doing? Like if you were <laughs> to actually amazing. zoom oh my God. out and like, yeah. <laughs> it would be like wacky. But when you're in it, it's just like, it really does make so you feel good. so alive. And I can also see why that's why people, you know, really get involved with it all like, on an ongoing long-term basis as well, because it does activate so many feelings and experiences. And it's kind of like those, um, like you almost, it's almost can be a bit like, um, psychedelic in a, in a way, you know, really gets you into those states of mind. But we had yeah, absolutely. that whole week together, um, which was intense, but also it took us into a depth that I, we both never really experienced because you know, we were just getting to know each other and then immediately, you know, we saw each other's shadows and the deep yucky stuff and the like raw emotion and we saw the stuff that would completely normally scare someone in a relationship but because it was in such a safe container, we actually were able to develop like the tools to um, navigate it within each other immediately and just like it just took us from, it, it probably I would say like put years on our relationship within a week. Mm. Um, Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that because maybe the rest of our relationship wouldn't have evolved the way it did without that, I think. Um, So I'm extremely grateful for that week. And then after that, like we were a fish, you know, put it on Facebook. It was a thing. Um, And we just kind of like took things slowly. We were actually doing long distance for a little bit there. Um, I was living a few hours away and yeah, eventually I moved up to the city. We gave that a shot, but the city just didn't, you know, juice me up in any way whatsoever. <laughs> it's, it's <not> a vibe. <laughs> so we moved um, south again, down into the country and have absolutely loved it. And I think within a year, Tully proposed to me, I think it was about a year in, and I was like in absolute shock, like to the point where I couldn't, like I wasn't almost even in my body anymore. So I couldn't even have sex for like three weeks after he proposed. Cause like, unless we were having like, you know, we were there and present during our lovemaking, we didn't really make love. And so because I just wasn't there, um, yeah. So it was just like a really weird time, like a very happy time, but it was weird. Like I'm looking back and I'm like, well, like aren't people normally like super stoked and just like, you know, all up in this little honeymoon bliss after they get engaged. But, um, yeah, we were not. We were, <laughs> well, Charlie probably was. I was like, oh, my God, what just happened? But I think it's, you know, when you're you're young and I think as a little girl you get told all these stories and I think, like, when you're really little you do dream of, oh, one day I'm going to go get married and that sort of thing. And so you have this expectation mm. and then it happens and you're like, holy fuck, did that just happen? Like, whoa. Absolutely. And that's something I'd, like, love to talk about because, you know, as kids or, you know, as anyone, we have these expectations of what marriage is and, you know, like you reach a certain age or, you know, you meet someone, you get married, you have kids, you buy the house and you live together forever, happily ever after. But so much has changed and that story is changing. And it's like, yeah, and I'm hearing you say like you got engaged and then it's just like, boom, this wave of like, wow, what does this mean? What does this actually mean? just like, yeah, it can feel like you're getting hit by a truck. I mean, I haven't been proposed to <laughs> yet, but um, yeah, it's like marriage, like intentional lifelong commitment is 
yeah, wow. Like that's a lot. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. It's, and I, so how did you navigate that? Well, there's aspects of it that are absolutely terrifying, if I'm honest. And I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, does this mean like forever, forever, forever? Like this is it. Like, and cause I was so young, like I was, uh, 21. So, and I know like, I guess it depends where you live. Like in Australia, that's pretty young. I think in America, it's pretty standard. So it kind of depends on where you're at, but, um, it was very scary initially, but I just had to trust. Like my gut feeling was like, yes. And then my head was like, oh my God, but what about this? What about this? And then my gut just, yes. So it just had to like be this process of going back to your center. Like every single time there was a bit of doubt or a bit of like fear associated because that's all normal. And um like, mm-hmm. I guess I kind of expected a bit of that. But after we got engaged, it was definitely a, um, a period. There was like a lot of self-sabotage after that. Like it, it was almost like part of me. And I I guess this might just, it could just be my tendency or it could just be the tendency of the feminine itself. But like I would test it. Oh my God. And I was like, are you sure you really want to do this kind of thing? And I just kind of became like a little bit of a monster. I'm not going to lie. Like, (laughs) it's so funny. I'm hearing this and I'm like, this is exactly what I would do. Like I can already like see my future. Like as soon as that happened, I would just be like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. All the fear would come up and I'd just be like, how can I sabotage this yeah, thing yeah totally so great to have the awareness hey? oh thank god um mind you thank in the god. moment like yeah I'm, I'm really grateful for Tully's level of awareness as well because he is very good at um being very balanced and seeing the whole picture very easily like even if there is a lot of emotion going on like he's quite solid in that so um he could see yeah. basically what was going on and I'm just like going on my little whirlwind be like, do you still love me now? Do you yeah. still love me now? Do you still love me now? And then he still did. And I'm like, well, fuck, all right, this is happening then. Let's go. <laughs> wow. So how does that, how does that kind of play out for you guys? Like, how do you guys hold space for each other? I'm just thinking for the listeners who are kind of, you know, maybe feeling into, oh, I act like that sometimes. And like, how can I create the, this kind of relationship where we can actually hold space for each other in a healthy way when these things are happening, when we're acting out? Mm, yeah. It, it definitely would have to start with the ability to like hold space for yourself. Like I was definitely going through my whirlwind, but I was able to still hold myself in it. And Tully was able to hold mm. himself in it. Like, and by hold yourself, I guess my opinion of that is really just being able to like be with yourself without judging, just being with it and be like, okay, whatever arises is okay. And, um, if I'm honest, like I was projecting quite a bit during that time because I think that was part of the self-sabotage of like pushing him away to see if he'd kind of come back and it was a bit like on my end it was a bit unhealthy but for Tully like he was able to sit with that and be with that within himself and then have awareness that you know okay she's just scared right now like how can I love her more in this fear rather than like react and retaliate or like kind of blow it up and because he was just so safe and like I guess that's kind of the thing as well when you're when you're holding space for each other because if you are feeling safe everything extra will come up to kind of be healed and be be looked at and be loved so he was he's just always been such like a safe man to be with that all of my insecurity about being a woman all of my insecurity about being chosen all of my insecurity about um, being married or being committed or like all of that came up because he was just so safe. And then he didn't judge mm. it. He just loved it, which then helped heal it. And then it dissolved. So that I, I feel like there's that sort of balance. And there's been many times where I've like done that for him in return. And it's kind of always been a bit of a dance, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving this word safety at the moment. I'll tell you a bit of a funny story. I was in a car with a beautiful, beautiful woman when I was last in Australia and we were talking about safety and relationship. And I had, I had at the time just split up with my, my beautiful ex partner and I was, and she was, she asked me, what did you get out of the relationship? And I said, a deeper sense of safety or, or, or an understanding of safety. And she she kind of really like um sh- was not on board with it at all because she continued on to tell me about how safe she believed that safety was created you know within ourselves and you know safety is something that we have to give ourselves and 
at the time, you know, in my like breakup brain uh, and emotional state, I was just like, ah, oh, fuck you. I'm so sick of personal <laughs> development and all this stuff. And like, I, I don't know how to do, why do I have to do everything on my own? And oh my God, like, ah. Um, <laughs> and I, and I think there's like, I think there's absolutely truth to what she's saying. And even like going back to what you were talking about earlier about, you know, being able to hold space for yourself is really, really important so that you're not coming from a place of lack, but safety and security in relationship is created with two people. Oh, 100%. You, know, you create you create that container and you know you you cannot grow and evolve and you know do exactly what you're saying like have all of these insecurities come up so that they can be felt, seen, loved and healed if your relationship container isn't mm. safe. And so what is sa- what is a safe relationship container kind of mean? Like what does that mean and what does that look like? Is it just like constantly showing up for one another? Like mm. What does that mean? Hmm. Well, firstly, I 100% I, like agree with you with um, even to an extent like, you know, your breakup self being like, fuck personal development. Like I kind of like <laughs> to an extent, I'm like, look, I know that everyone's all about, you know, cultivate everything within yourself and cultivate this safety and give yourself everything you need and then you won't like need it externally. But I think also – if you could actually give yourself everything you would ever need, then what's the point of even being in a relationship? Like, and Mm. it's not to get anything necessarily, but it is to just expand love and expand joy, but you're not going to be able to expand those things unless the other stuff comes up too. And when you come together with someone in a relationship, like you have your blueprint, you have their blueprint. And then when you come together, you actually create a third blueprint and that's the blueprint of your relationship. So every single person Mm. you're ever with is actually going to create a completely different blueprint, which is why firstly, we can't compare relationship to relationship. It's also why we can't be like, well, because that happened in my past relationship, it's going to happen again. Cause you're literally with a whole Mm. different human being who's been brought up completely different, has different emotions, different life experiences, different wisdom, different, um, path that they're on, like everything. So every single relationship blueprint is completely unique. And I think that's firstly the coolest thing in the whole world. And secondly, that means safety in every individual relationship is going to look completely different. For me, um, I didn't have a history of physical uh, unsafety. What's the word I'm looking for? Like I always felt safe physically in relationships. So what I really wanted was emotional safety because that's something that I didn't always have in relationship and even growing up. Like I was part of a really big family. So a lot of the time, like all the kids were kind of lumped together rather than our our, like individual emotions. So Mm -hmm. I really needed that emotional stability and safety to know that I had like a lot of emotion within me. I'm a very like feminine person and not gender specific, but more so like I am very in tune with my emotions and I am not afraid to like express them in any way they show up. So for me, I needed someone who could offer me that stability of I'm going to like love you in this, but also I needed someone who would still set a strong boundary if I was taking things too far. And that was something that Tully offered Mm -hmm. me. So I actually needed boundary as well as love. And for someone else though, that might not even be a top value of theirs and they just might need physical safety or they just might need to know that like there's that monogamous commitment or they might actually need to know that there's not a monogamous commitment and that's safe to them, you know? So I think every single relationship is entirely different and so I can only really speak to my own, but Mm. yeah. So, But I think it's also good to have perspective though in the personal development world where everyone's talking about, oh, you need a man who holds space for you and is safe and this and that. It's like, fuck, like just, you know, like everything's so unique that we can't just put like a blanket rule over everything. Yeah. I'm just trying to feel into like what safety meant for me in my in my last relationship. And I think the biggest thing that created the depth for me, and this might sound so simple, but it was just little things like always answering mm-hmm. the phone if I called, responding straight away. Um, if we make a plan, even if it's in two weeks' time, you know, follow up and 
and lock it in mm-hmm. and schedule it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, what else made me feel safe? And then, yeah, they were just listening, mm-hmm. actually. And I really resonate with you about, like, the listening and the loving but also having the boundary. And, like, you know, I I, I really <laughs> – I resonate as well with you when you say you're really – um, in touch with your feminine essence and when it comes to emotional expression mm. I'm exactly the same and I fully like allow myself 100% to just like roll with what whatever's on top for mm-hmm. me and what I loved in my last relationship is how he could you know quote unquote hold space um, <laughs> but also didn't didn't need to like get swept away with my bullshit yes. you know like he didn't he he didn't need to run away with my stories. He was just simply listening. Yeah. And um, to me, that was super erotic uh-huh. <laughs> like to be, yes. to be heard and seen and understood, not saved, but just loved for exactly who I was in that moment. Even when my self love was in my shoes and my, and like, I just felt like I was, you know, nothing in that moment, but just still, there mm. it's the showing up that made me feel mm-hmm. safe the continuous showing up mm-hmm. yeah totally yeah for sure yeah yeah i love that yeah and then oh, I, I kind of there's something else that's on top for me that i want to just like cover before we go on and i loved how you were saying earlier that it was the first time you were you know dating someone without that attachment mm-hmm. to what it's going to look like in the future And that's a really interesting dance, I find, because there's a fine line and balance between not having expectation or attachment, but then also being very direct in terms of knowing what you want. Mm -hmm. And you also said that you were very ready for the universe to send you someone to go deep with. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a strong intention. Um, So how do we kind of like go out into the world and say, okay, universe, like I'm ready to go deep with someone. Like I'm so ready for this kind of like that relationship. Um, But I'm also totally not attached to the future, (laughs) you know, like. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. And I think this is something that, um, and I'm going to speak generally here and it may or may not land for everybody. So again, like if you're listening, take what resonates, leave what doesn't, but the feminine like loves that story and that fantasy, right? Like we love to get swept up in what if, what if he is the one and what if we live this life together? And we find like we're two days into dating someone. We've already planned our wedding and our kids' names, right? And the masculine energy within us is that more structured, a bit more disciplined, that energy. So, and this is just what I did. I like, it's going to work for, Some people, I don't know whether, I think it depends on the person, but what I did was I really cultivated like that inner union of my own masculine and feminine energy. So I got into a relationship with myself. I imagined like two different archetypes within me, my feminine, like that goddessy sort of creative, loves to fantasize, loves to play, emotional, that side of me. And then I I did have like that like safe, strong masculine energy that could look after me and I didn't I I made an effort not to cultivate a masculine energy who needed to protect my feminine which then meant to shut everyone else out because Mm. I could keep myself safe and I feel like if you're walking around needing to shut down your heart because you're scared you'll get hurt that isn't like you're still not trusting yourself to keep yourself safe Whereas if you can walk around with the open heart but still be sure of who you are and what you want and what you can stand for, then that's a a balance that is a bit more freeing. So I found like if I was just in that feminine energy, I would find myself like wanting a relationship. Like I want this, I want this, I want this. And I'd sit in that feeling of like want and desire, which would only cultivate more of that. And then I'd feel sad because I don't have it yet. Or then I'd – be obsessed because there's a potential for it over there, you know? So it would kind of get um wrapped up in just the emotion side of it, which is fun for a while, but it can also be very exhausting. And then, you know, if you're sitting just in that masculine side of yourself, like you'll struggle to even recognize it if it did show up in your life because you're too like mm. single focused on maybe work or this or this. 
So it was to really cultivate that balance within me. And I just literally dated myself. Like I would take myself on real dates and I would speak to myself from like my masculine energy to my feminine, like really beautiful and loving. And I would really treat myself how I wanted to be treated by men. And I know it's like all this like self love stuff. Like I'm, to be honest, I really don't love talking about self love because it kind of makes me cringe a little bit. And I don't know why, but what I do know is that like, I think cause it's like, it's so on trend right now that I'm like, ugh away but (laughs) essentially it's what I was doing it was like I was really cultivating a relationship within myself so now if it showed up like I wasn't attached to it if it showed up I needed it or I didn't need it if it was there I could approach it with curiosity and I was still open but I didn't let my feminine just go like yes okay that's mine I'm taking it that's what I want and then you know be like if things crashed and burned I would be completely broken But what I did Mm. is like, hey, if this doesn't work, I trust myself enough to hold myself through it that I won't be broken. Or if I am, I can love myself through my own brokenness easy enough. So then all of a sudden I wasn't scared of it not working out. So then I wasn't overthinking, okay, how do I approach this? How do I, what do I say? Like, you know, all of that. (laughs) And then that masculine energy just made me feel safe. So now it's like, well, I feel like, like I'm getting the intimacy from myself that I need. So if I get it from Tully in an initial dating period, like that's a bonus and I love it and I'm going to soak it up, but I would still accept it from Tully. Like I wasn't like, I'm giving myself everything I need, so I don't need it from you because I was like, fuck, like of course I'd love it from you too. Like all the love, I'm not on rations, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's eternal and it's endless and it's not you can never get enough, you can never give enough. It's just Yeah. Yeah. So, relentless. Exactly. So I think I I cultivated that balance. Um and not perfect all the time, but like mostly. And then like I remember just sitting on my friend's office chair in her bedroom and I was swinging on it and I was like, Oh, you know what? I think I'm ready for him. Like I, I think I'm ready. She's like, what do you mean? Like, what should it, what, what do you want it to feel like? And then I just like brainstormed like everything I wanted it to feel like, not look like, not sound mm. like, like, what did I want to feel? And I wanted to feel like excited and liberated, but I also wanted to feel grounded in who I was. And I wanted to feel like an open heart, but I wanted to feel safe. And I wanted to feel like desire and lust, but I also wanted to feel like just a really deep love. And like, so I just listed all of these things that I wanted to feel in relationship. And then I focused on finding evidence of that now in my life as it was. And then from that experience, I think it just like automatically brought Tully in. And it's funny because again, Mm -hmm. like I was saying, like I had known Tully for so long and never felt that chemistry. And then as soon as I'd done this, like there he was and it felt it, like it matched my description of what I wanted to feel. So I was like, well, and, and like, I wasn't actually that interested in Tully, but it felt right. So I was like, no, should I, I don't know. And I had so many stories in my head of like, I don't think he's it. Like, and it's so he'll probably listen to this, but I have told him, so I'm sure it's fine. But like, I just wasn't like into him fully like that. And then it just felt like that curiosity just drove me. And so I just trusted that. And then, Turned out fabulous. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm so into that. And I love that kind of like manifestation through feeling instead of like what it externally looks like, you know, tangibly mm-hmm. because the emotion and the feeling and like even on a like a sensory level, like what does it smell like mm. maybe, you know, like what temperature is your skin and like, you know, how does your heart feel is like such a beautiful way to sort of call in the future. I love, <laughs> I love you know, I'm always doing stuff like that. It's, it's, it's a bit witchy. I love it. It's just like doing little spells. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it's so sensual and delicious and just like what a way to live life. Um, oh, my God, I had an amazing question and now it's gone. Damn, it, I hate it It'll happens. come back if, it, if it's supposed yeah. to, I'm sure. Yeah, it will. I'd love to um, kind of go back to the story but jump to like I really want to talk about, I guess, intentional – commitment and marriage mm-hmm. and how you guys yeah how you guys went about this yeah this commitment to each other mm-hmm. um because i guess you know if we're talking about conscious relationships here um 
there's so much within that. There's so many different relationship styles out there and, you know, saying till death do us part, you know, is that still realistic these days? You know, there's so many question marks around this stuff. And so how did you guys kind of come to this place of intentional commitment and yeah, making a beautiful ceremony out of it? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just thinking of where to start. It's big. Yeah, it's a it lot. is. Um, so <laughs> where I started on my end was after Tully proposed to me, I felt so caught up in the moment when I said yes that I really felt like to honor myself, I actually needed to drop in and like reevaluate, but not reevaluate my decision, but just like what that meant to me. So it took me six months of like sabotaging here and there, testing it, blah, blah, blah. Finally, like found myself within the mess and then was like, oh, right, that's what I need. I just need to actually fully choose it myself rather than like pushing away from his choice in a way, even though I'd said yes. But I feel like you know, when you you get proposed to, it is so caught up in that moment. And then I feel like there's like, oh, well, I said yes, so that just must be what we're doing. And I felt, and this could just be my personality, but I really felt like I needed to choose to. So I actually mm-hmm. went out when Tully was away on a business trip and bought him a ring. And when he came home, I re-proposed to him about six months later. And for me, that was like my choosing, I think. And that was the first step in us feeling like it was a really like joint decision moving forward rather than one person asking and one person saying yes. And I mean, like that works for a lot of people. It just didn't work for me because I'm like always like, I need to make my own decisions, blah, blah, blah. You know, so that's kind of <laughs> like my personality. Um, so that was what we started with. And then we had no desire to get married quickly. We were just like, oh, we can wait like years down the track. Like there's no rush. And I think initially we were just like, it's just way more fun and you feel way more connected if we're fiancés doing life together rather than girlfriend and boyfriend. Because for us at the time, like girlfriend and boyfriend felt so young, whereas we felt Mm. like we had a much more, a lot more wisdom within our relationship based on like, you know, obviously the learnings that we'd had and that sort of thing. So we didn't want to have big girlfriend and boyfriend, but we also like, felt like wife and husband was far away. So we just like wanted to be in that middle ground of like, and when we got engaged, there definitely was that shift in energy and there definitely was like a deeper commitment there. So we started there where I proposed back to him. And then from there, we just kind of coasted it out for a while and just kind of like waited and see what comes up. Where's the fear? And we just like navigated that. So I think with the commitment stuff, like, you do have to just navigate fear as it comes up. And then um, we decided that we were going to all of a sudden, like literally overnight, we're like, you know what, let's get married in three months. Let's just do it. And so then it was just like we're on this fast track of we were going to be wife and husband in three months. And then it was like this pressure cooker and everything left over came up to mm-hmm. look at and deal with before we were getting married. And – there was a lot in, in different areas, but something that we were both on the same page about was that we both had this, um, perspective over relationship where, uh, like feelings are going to evolve and change all the time. Like you are going to feel so in love and in this deep lust with your partner some days and other days you're not going to want a bar of them. You're going to be very irritated by them. That's completely mm. normal. Relationships go through seasons. And sometimes seasons will last a week. Sometimes they'll last months. Sometimes they'll last years where sometimes you're not going to be having sex every day or every second day or every week, even or sometimes even every month. That's sometimes going to be the case. Sometimes you're going to be arguing a lot. Sometimes you're going to be completely in your flow together and completely in sync. Sometimes you're going to be distracted in your own lives and not together. Like it's always going to change. So if we were going to base our commitment off our feelings for each other, I I personally don't believe that's a strong enough foundation to base a commitment off. Like just because you love someone isn't a reason enough to commit. I feel like Mm. commitment is beyond that. And this is, this is really just like Tully and I just shared a perspective on this. And I think this is why we've um, felt so good in our commitment is because our commitment was deep enough to be like, okay, like some days we're not going to be feeling it, but we commit anyway. And then that created 
a deeper level of safety that we actually opened up to a deeper level of intimacy that wasn't there before because of that level mm. of I'm committed regardless type of thing. And obviously we had our deal breakers. That's I think every relationship will have deal breakers. And what's do you mind sharing? Okay, what they are, a deal breaker or? would literally be like if we were off having affairs and weren't being honest mm. about it, you know, like, unconsensual. Exactly. And I think like and I think we also were on, on the same page regarding like anything is open for discussion in our relationship, but it needs to be discussed is kind of, yeah. you know. So then we have a sense of freedom within the commitment as well, where it's like, okay, anything can be put on the table and we're willing to just sit down and have a chat about it and, you know, be safe for each other and, and it's all open without judgment. But also we're allowed to have boundaries. We're allowed to stand up for what we personally believe in or what we personally need and we're committed regardless. Mm. And so mm-hmm. like the non-negotiables might be the honesty thing um, with like big stuff or the non-negotiable might be um, abuse. Like if ever there was anything like that, like that could be a deal breaker immediately, you know, like so mm. there are stuff on the table for deal breakers and then anything yeah. else will go. But we committed regardless because that means like, you know, Tully and I even um, right after we got engaged, we probably had about three months of bickering. And, like, we still loved each other, but it was, like, bickering. And so sometimes when you're bickering all the time, you can kind of, like, forget the depth of your love behind that. But if our relationship was based on, okay, oh, my God, we're bickering, relationship is over, don't feel as close as we used to, because when it goes for a few months, you can really get caught up in it. But if that was what Mm. our relationship was built off, then you wouldn't have a relationship. And I've got some really beautiful friends who – you know, the second one thing goes wrong, it's like, oh, no, it's over. It's like, really, though? Like, is it really over just because you feel differently in this moment? Like, our emotions are completely entwined with our hormones, with what we ate mm-hmm. that day, how much sleep we had the night before, whether we've had sex recently with that person, um, whether we feel good in our environment, in our home, whether we feel like a sense of community, whether we're eating well and have the right vitamins in our body. Like, it's so – there is so much riding on it. But if we were to make decisions in every moment like that, I feel like that's pretty irrational. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good point, actually. It's like, how do we know when to quit or commit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Huge, huge. And, like, I couldn't tell you for everyone. Like, mm. because you never know what the full – entirety of something is behind the scenes and then for both people as well right mm. um but yeah absolutely and to an extent like your intuition is going to be playing a part but even then it's like what's your relationship with your intuition or is it like yeah because i've it all comes talked to, to about my intuition before and it's actually because like my hormones were doing something crazy i'm like no it's my intuition it must be you know like <laughs> I always love to leave a cycle. It's like if I if I'm making big decisions, I think about them over a full yes. cycle. So like yes. a, like in my whole period oh. cycle because mm-hmm. I'll have like at least four different, you know, the four phases in the cycle. So I have like four different like major thoughts about this decision, and then I can ride the wave out. Otherwise, I just I've got to give it time. Got to give it space. Hundred percent. And I think. I think I actually listened to a really interesting podcast recently about relationships and. Um, yeah kind of like touching on this this non-negotiables and like actually having a conversation about what your values are in relationships like so many people don't actually discuss these things and love sometimes is just not enough and I really agree with what you're saying there like just because you love someone it's not enough to commit there are other things that need to be like really in alignment and those things will change for for Mm -hmm. everyone like sometimes you know like are we going to celebrate Christmas is a really big deal and could be a deal breaker Mm -hmm. for for some people because it's so important to them culturally spiritually Mm -hmm. Um, whereas others they wouldn't even think to ask that kind of stuff you know money is another big thing and we're going to have shared finances Mm -hmm. like what do we what do we see our money story being in the future how much money is enough like what do we want to call in that's a big Mm -hmm. one and then you know there's other things like monogamy polyamory Mm -hmm. are we open are we open to potentially being open one day if it came Mm -hmm. up and i love what you're saying about you know anything is honesty honesty is a is a core value and anything is allowed to be discussed Mm -hmm. you know which is beautiful Mm -hmm. and i think like in um my life i have seen 
I guess I'm just thinking of one couple in particular. They have been together since they were teenagers and now they're in their mid-30s and they've, you know, had many, many relationships in that time, obviously. (laughs) Um, And, you know, they've also been polyamorous for part Mm -hmm. of it. And um, I always found that really fascinating because, you know, at the time I was new to this whole, like, polyamorous stuff and I was just, it just blew my mind. (laughs) But to then, like to then kind of observe how they did it with such beauty and integrity and and respect for one another. You know, they talked about it for years before even going into it. And then um, they also ended it. They also came out of it the other end as well. It was just something that they wanted to do because they'd been together since they were kids. Mm -hmm. And how beautiful is that to stay committed to someone within your marriage and say, this is something that we both need for our life. Mm -hmm but I want to do it with you. And that's when I, and that's, the, you know, that's a particular example that I found really beautiful. Like, would I be able to do it? I, d- I have no idea, but um, yeah, I don't know why I felt called to share that. Mm. I just think it's like nice to be able to have options and to be able to talk about it, even if it doesn't happen, to be able to be honest, to talk about yeah. it. Is beautiful. It's the commitment piece. And, you know, with polyamory or monogamy or whatever your relationship looks like, like it's just that deeper commitment and safety to know that you can still experience your own human life and you have the freedom to do that and you can still be with the person that you love, you know, and they can do it too. And and I think it mm. actually even goes down to like, you know, you think – um back to and you may have like heard this concept before but you think back to you know our parents era or the our grandparents era and it was all about like role mate relationship where you know stereotypically the woman would have a specific role and the man would have a specific role and she was normally the caregiver and the home nurturer and he was normally the provider and in today's world it's completely flipped and it's all about soulmate relationships not role mate and so because of that Mm. we are learning a completely new way to relate and it hasn't been done before we've literally broken the old model and I'm sure every relationship may still have aspects that feel good but we're in a day where it's all about you know striving to the full expression of your soul and who you are and that's to be encouraged rather than living in a box within your relationship and so because of that Every single relationship is going to look completely different and the advice that works for, for one relationship may not work for the second. The What worked for your previous relationship may not work for your next relationship. And mm. beyond that, it's like we're literally having to relearn how to love or not how to love but how to be in love in today's society and integrate our emotions and our feelings and our boundaries and what we need and what we do want and what we don't want into living in today's world. And so it's never really been done before and it's never been done before how you want it to be done. So you got to kind of make up your own rules, you know? (coughs) Sorry. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And it is so true. It's like how we are relating now and how we, yeah, how we're relating now is so unique to our time. Mm. Like as human beings, as a species, like the way that we approach love and marriage now is like, completely completely new and it is up to us as individuals and as a couple to create the love that we want totally and i think and and in perspective you know like in the western culture because there are cultures out there who've done it their own way for forever really and it's just like yeah in the western culture you know um that real like man woman kind of christian marriage type of thing like that's been like a social norm for so long and that I think is what's breaking um you know you go to some cultures and they already have like 10 wives so it's totally normal (laughs) um and I won't speak too much on that but I think yeah just for like how we've been brought up um things are really like changing and evolving and it's amazing like it's the coolest thing ever but it does mean that we have to kind of like maintain perspective of ourselves and and it's going to look different to how our parents did it and that's okay and Mm. I think that's probably something that both Tully and I shared was that we both questioned how our parents did it not because they necessarily did it wrong but I looked at my parents and like I love them to bits they've done a great job raising kids they've done a great job in their relationship they've remained committed but like I 
think I want to feel a little different to that. So how do I navigate that in my own life rather than like falling back into old patterns of how we were raised? Mm. And it all comes back to self, you know, it's just like taking responsibility for ourselves because we're the only ones responsible for our own happiness. Mm. And when we're showing up for ourselves in the most exquisite way, that's when we can really show up in our relationships and to the rest of the mm-hmm. world. I also, I also really love, this is just a total side note, <laughs> but I really love to commit and when I'm in a relationship like to commit to not only my own happiness and living my own hashtag best life because <laughs> yeah. that's gonna that's gonna impact that's gonna impact my partner and my relationship. Like if I just like fall into this relationship and then like like let myself go into, you know, like all these bad habits and bad patterning and like, you know, depression happens, of course we have bad years mm-hmm. and everything and that's totally fine. But, you know, if we stop taking responsibility for ourselves, that's when things can get dangerous. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like not only just with our emotional health, but our physical health as well. It's like I commit to treating my body with pride and respect mm-hmm. and, you know, nourishing myself. And like just because I'm in a relationship doesn't mean that I'm going to like now eat McDonald's mm-hmm. and like, you know, let myself go. You know, that's mm-hmm. such a, that's such an old story. It's like, oh, I'm married now. I don't need to get dressed mm-hmm. up. Or it's like, oh, I'm married now. I don't need to try. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I'm like, honey, no freaking way. Now that I'm in a relationship, it's actually time for me to turn yeah. up the sexy o meter uh-huh. because, you know, it's like, it's time to turn it and- up. Like, I want to be all, all of my hotness, all my sexiness, all my deliciousness, all my self loving, badass yes. stuff even more for this like gorgeous human that I'm sharing totally. it with, you know? And it's like, do it for yourself, do it for them. Like it, it doesn't even matter where the motivation comes from really. It's just like, do what feels good, do what makes you feel alive and juiced up. And like, I think, you know, you get into a relationship, the honeymoon phase is there, all these juices are flowing very naturally. There is going to come a time where those hormones aren't running the show anymore and you may st- you may actually need to manufacture some of that and that's normal mm. and a lot of people get to that point in the relationship and think oh my god the spark's gone we can't be together anymore and it's like no that the spark doesn't have to go it's necessarily but you go through your seasons you go through your honeymoon phase you'll go through a shadow phase you'll go through another another uh, another honeymoon phase you'll go through a plateau like that's completely normal so like you do have to learn how to cultivate a sexual intimacy regardless of the phase that you're in. And sometimes it's going to feel like the easiest thing in the world. And sometimes it's going to feel like you're pushing shit uphill a little bit and you're going Mm. to have to cultivate how to communicate effectively regardless of what season and phase you're in. You're going to have to um, cultivate your commitment regardless, right? Like these things are things that you do have to work on because like you said um, before we started recording, like, There is no rule book. We were not taught this in schools. We do have to learn ourselves this muscle, essentially, is what we're building, a relationship muscle. And, again, Mm. it's going to be a different muscle with every relationship, but the fundamentals are still there, and we still have to have that perseverance. And especially as millennials where everything's so quick for us, if we want an answer, we Google it. And if we want, you know – Anything really, it's very quick. And something that older generations did have on us, generally speaking, is that they had that perseverance and they didn't need the immediate reward, you know. Mm. And that's something I have not mastered and I'm learning it and I'm learning where it's necessary in life and where it isn't necessary in life. But I believe that in relationship, like, to have a bit more perseverance knowing that everything is temporary and this too shall pass if you're in a bit of a shit spot and that, yeah, like the reward doesn't have to come immediately, I think is powerful. Mm. I love that. I love that so much. My whole body just like melted <laughs> and, and and I feel like, ah, oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah beautiful and, and to be I think fair it's... though just as a quick disclaimer like if a relationship is experiencing like abuse that's kind of like a yeah. null and void contract gone like have the courage please to get out of a shitty situation type of thing 
And it's Yeah, and I mean like even in those even in a less extreme situation, like, you know, sometimes relationships do end and if you're listening to this and if you you know, are going through something where you're thinking about uncoupling, you know, like compassion and it's okay mm. and it happens. And yeah. um it's not about yeah, it's there's no right or wrong. So <clears throat> But I think it's like it's so easy to subscribe to all of these kind of common old stories of like, oh, the honeymoon phase ends and then sex dies and, you know, intimacy dwindles and it just then we just start existing together. You know, that's kind of mm-hmm. like a really common story. Mm-hmm. But actually that just simply does not have to 100%. be the case. And, yeah, it is totally – like yeah seasonal absolutely and you know you'll have sexual phases but you'll continue to fall in love with each other Mm -hmm. over and over again because we're never the same person i don't know about you girl but i think (laughs) that you totally are like me and like i am a different person every second of every day like i am forever i change my outfit forever like my outfit will change three (laughs) times a day depending on my mood like it's a thing exactly but also like it's it's so important to like keep awareness around um, what phase that you think you're in and then how you saw other people handle that phase when you were growing up. For example, like I saw, you know, if people, girlfriend and boyfriend, like lots of intimacy, lots of sex, lots of like that juice and zest for life. I saw people who were married all of a sudden have kids and fall out of love, right? So when I was a girlfriend, that juice and stuff was naturally there. The second we got engaged or got married, it disappeared for a while. I was like, oh, my God, I'm just playing into the stories based on my current situation, based on what are my stories about this situation? What are my beliefs about this situation? So that's what you have to combat because you can be in, you know, the infancy of your relationship and be like, I know all my stories. I know all my tendencies and my beliefs. Like we got this for a long time type of thing. And then the second you get married – like different stuff's going to come up and it's almost like you keep unlocking different levels. Like you can't get to level 10 until you've gone to level nine, you know, like and yeah. it's just this ongoing <laughs> process. And I'm sure that once I have kids, I'm going to have a whole new a range of oh stuff to deal with. And then when the kids are toddlers versus at school versus teenagers versus leaving the home, you know, like all of that is playing a role all the time. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. This has been awesome. This has been awesome. It's um yeah, it's kind of <laughs> it's gone off in its own little trajectory <laughs> and that's and it's been perfect. I've got a couple of quick fire questions um to to wrap it up. So the first one is how do you cultivate more pleasure in your life? Uh being sensual with everything. And this is something I still practice like often and sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great but like finding pleasure in eating food and standing outside in the cold versus standing inside in the warm and how your clothes feel on your body and the hair on the back of your back back of your back you know what I mean um (laughs) just like pleasure in all those areas and presence huge I believe is for pleasure because the second that you're stuck into your phone and then all of a sudden your partner comes over and you want to make love and you feel like all up in your head about it. Like it's due to a lack of presence and, and it starts long before the bedroom and pleasure isn't only for the bedroom also, but it's like cultivating pleasure in the rest of your life then overflows everywhere else. And like self pleasure, like don't be afraid mm. to go to town on yourself when it's necessary as well. Amen, sister. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm all about it. Pretty much everything that you just said is just like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Beautiful. I wish we were neighbors. Oh, like, totally. I really like, like, when are we going to hang out? Well, so, it's funny you yeah. say that, but I'm, I was like Googling last night, moving to New Zealand. So. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. This is a good thing. You can say I've got like a little like caravan and a cabin on the property. <laughs> so you guys can like totes come and stay yeah. when you arrive. I was like, once we're finished in this town, I reckon we'll do some sort of house swap for a year and go over to New Zealand for, and just house swap around the world is what I'm, my, my dream is like house swap in Canada, New Zealand, Cute. like everywhere. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, what a life. What a life. Okay. So it seems how you love self-love so much and love talking about it. Um, <laughs> what's one thing you've learned about self-love recently? Um, like I probably haven't fully – um, integrated this lesson, but it's coming to me quite strongly right now. So I'm going to say it anyway, in case someone needs to hear it as well. Um, that self-love perhaps doesn't need to be unconditional. And what I mean by that is that we should maybe have some conditions on ourselves and on what we expect of ourselves. And they can be very basic, like respect and understanding and the like not judging everything that we experience um just like i don't fully believe that love in relationship is always needs to be unconditional i feel like unconditional love can be very selfless and it's like we're still human and Mm. i think we're allowed to be selfish as well and we deserve a bit of that in our lives and if we're unconditional in our self in our love for someone else we can often um dance all over our own boundaries and those basic conditions that we do actually need to feel safe in love and i think that that translates to ourself as well um where i think there are basic conditions that we need to feel safe in our own love for ourselves And it's going to, again, be different for everybody. But for me, for example, like I do need a basic level of self-respect to be okay with loving myself. Because if I'm loving myself all the time, no matter what, which I have done in the past, I can definitely get into habits that are not healthy for myself and be like, "Mm, hashtag self-love. And Mm. when it's not actually self-love, you know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to exactly explain that, but I just feel like on my heart, like I don't know for sure if self love is unconditional or if it should be unconditional or whether it's actually like you're in a relationship with yourself. So just as you would have non negotiables in your relationship, have non negotiables with yourself and where you have a commitment in your relationship. And, and this goes for if you're not in a relationship, it's just like same, same, like a commitment within yourself and. An understanding and that honest conversation and to actually, you know, be open with being that honest with yourself when the time comes and any conversation goes on the table, any conversation goes on the table within mm. yourself. And I think that's kind of important. And I don't really know how to explain it because I haven't really heard it before. So it's kind of just like coming into me now and I'm, yeah, first time really voicing that. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to go back and re-listen to it, but it's landing. It's landing for me. Yeah, I like it. Thanks for sharing. Mm. Uh, The final question is, what is the most impactful book that you've ever read? You can only choose one. (gasps) I know it's like, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's it's a torturous question. Fuck. I hope you're okay with swearing. I've said it a couple of times on here. Yeah, it's Um, totally fine with it. I'm looking up at my bookshelf, but I don't think it's up there. Okay, let me think. Most impactful book. God, there's a lot. Um, I think it's probably, oh, you said only one. Okay. (laughs) I think at the moment I will stand by Earth is Hiring by Peter Kelly. Oh, um, I need to read that Very one. good book. And I am also aware of the fact that she is currently writing a second book that is a complete evolution. And a lot of what she's written in the first is still definitely relevant, but also evolved. So I'm, I'm going to say I'll probably think her second book is better. But until that's released, <laughs> it's her first book, Earth is Hiring. <laughs> Awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. It's come into my field a few times now, Ooh, so I'm excited it, to get my hands on it. Clearly it's a sign. You gotta get it. Yeah. 
I got to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do it. Okay. Oh, you're amazing. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for this, for this chat. It's been so effortless and easy and fun. And there's some really juicy nuggets of wisdom in here. And I'm excited for the listeners to yeah. get to get to soak it up thank you thank you. thank you so much for having so, me on as well yeah of course and just um where can the listeners find you if um, they want to learn more right, about you work with you right now um instagram probably best which is mm-hmm. garden of full stop venus um can find me on facebook if they want to i don't know how long i'll be on that social media platform i i'm a bit unpredictable mm. with that um yeah, I would say Instagram's the best bet. And then from there, you know, they can email or message or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Beautiful. And I'll link to it below as well. So there's Caitlin's profile and also Caitlin and Telly's Living in Love is really beautiful. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. All the living, links will be in the show Living notes. in Love's, um, that's a lot more relationship stuff at the moment, which is living in full stop love. But at the moment we're kind of like on a little bit of a hiatus regarding that account. Um, mm. yeah, I feel like there's a deeper wisdom coming, but we're just waiting until it's here and embodied and ready. And then that'll flow yeah. through there. So I would say the personal accounts. Yeah. Mwah. Cool. Roger that. <laughs> Roger that. Ah, oh, amazing. You're beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And yeah, I hope everyone got value or even just one little gold nugget and then if anyone's got any more questions of course like i'm more than happy for people to reach out as well hola (laughs) if you enjoyed this episode hit like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app and don't forget to share it with someone who you think could benefit from hearing it too you can also sign up for la lula news and stay up to date with all the juicy content that we only share on email And I want to take a moment to honor you for following your curiosity and prioritizing your pleasure in this way. And until next time, thank you so much for listening and I'll be back with another episode soon.